Hi, my name is Jason, and today I'll be talking about uh, Phaser and kind of briefing over game development and design. Just a little basics. First, uh, before we hop into Phaser, we want to think about what are the basic elements needed for a game. Uh, this is just a basic list we'll be heading out through the whole uh, presentation. First, we'll go over obje objectives, players, boundaries, rules, procedures, resource, conflict, and outcome. So we'll go dive straight into it. What is Phaser? Phaser is a game framework that uses a custom build of Pixie.js for WebGL canvas rendering and supports desktop and mobile web browsers. Pixie.js is a rendering library that will allow you to create rich and interactive graphics across platform applications in games without having to dive into WebGL, API, or deal with browser and device compatibility. The whole goal with Phaser in mind when it was developed was actually trying to develop it with mobile in mind. So it actually was developed for mobile first, then going into desktop. So, so it's supported by iOS and Android. So those, that's the key things. Um, we, since we've been learning JavaScript, we've been, uh, I've been using uh, JavaScript to program for Phaser. But here are the key features of Phaser. And most interesting enough, it is plain JavaScript. There's nothing else. You can use Redux for the store and how to, how to implement it. But all in all, it's still plain old JavaScript. You could do Code Wars based on it. Uh, easy, easy asset loading, I'll go ahead and more into that later on. But with WebGL and Canvas, this is just for basic rendering. It is two, uh, 2D. So it's kind of 2.5D. I want to kind of summarize that one. So it is 2D at initial source, but I'd like to consider it more 2.5D uh, because WebGL does have uh, handle 3D. But for that, it's mostly 2D. Um, audio, we, we won't dive too much into it, but with web audio, that's basically implement and manipulate audio content inside web applications. And, and we are going to implement physics, tweens. I'll talk about this a little later. But tweens, if you don't know, I mean, no one really knows what tweens are. But tweens are for animating smoothly. That's basically it. And the core part about Phaser is that it's very impressive for plugins. A lot of stuff can be found on its website. So you can actually find some cool stuff on their website. I'll be explaining that towards the end. And what are the objectives of a game? And I think they are the most important uh, for motivation of players to engage in gameplay. Some objectives can be thought about as kind of the core mechanics of a game. You want to actually draw on a player and actually show them, you know, what do we have to do to actually win? And I usually think about more or less first-person shooters, Mario and Zelda. Most of them have uh, Game Basics 101 with Mario. A lot, of, a lot of teachings have been done just based on level design and so forth. So, so the first aspect are players in a game. The game design calls for players to interact with one another in the game system. And according to this diagram, you can actually have multiple ways you can interact with the game. You could go solo player with a player versus game. You could co-op with many players. You can actually have multiple roles interacting kind of separately within to actually interact with the game. And you have team competition, and so forth. So what do we need to populate our game? And that's, that's kind of the main thing uh, why we have Phaser. So you have to think of sprites. This text is kind of small, but the whole point is to focus on the right side, where we have this uh, kind of sheet of PNGs. And sprites aren't elves or fairies. A sprite is a computer graphic that being made moved on screen and manipulated as a single identity entity. So uh, further into sprites, we actually, in this code, we actually want to preload. We have, based on its a uh, phasers API, we actually have an atlas function. And it calls, uh, just basically loads this JSON file, an image to show you how much, how make uh, several unique sprites from the same file. And further going in deeper into it, we're actually just adding the sprites in this create function. So a cop is game.add a sprite. It's easy as that just to create sprites in there. It's no big deal. And the sec another uh, process of basic element of game is world building. Uh, 
the code seems small on the left, but the whole point is this object, uh, this screen on the right. So this is the character we call dude. So dude actually, it's not on anything. It's just basically on the bottom of your screen, and that doesn't seem right, right? That doesn't make sense. But we, in order to establish that, we actually have to dive deeper into rules and procedures. Rules and procedures are more or less what you kind of want to, it's basically an instruction booklet that you kind of throw away when you first open up a video game back in the day. But they're actually important. So they serve three main purposes. They're defining objects and conditions, restricting player actions, de determining effects on players, and these procedures, they can ask, they can specific instructions of what actions to take during play. They can also refer to a specific set of controls. So that's kind of your instruction booklet, but from a game developing standpoint. And now we are establishing boundaries, which means that we now can actually uh, put this sprite on there. And this relates to actions that are only possible in the game that would much different consequences outside the game boundaries. And it can relate to a playing field, which is what we have here, and other limiting geometry in the game world. So we actually put it, but now we can actually have it on here. But so in this code right now, we actually have established our ground previously. And then the key uh, line is platforms equals game.add.group. This actually creates a group. And actually allow you to group together similar objects and control them as one single unit. Now we've actually added attributes such as ground.body equal, uh, immovable equals true, and so on and so forth. We have a ledge, so platform.create, and it creates, it, it creates ledges so that makes sure that you can actually put the character on the spray and, and it responds to it. So now we want to actually do something with the game. So we need to implement uh, physics. So this is the world of physics. And obviously, the Mario uh, GIF is not uh, part of the physics. But the physics that Phaser uses is actually arcade physics. Uh, it's, it's great because it's kind of a lightweight 2D. You can actually use it on a mobile. It doesn't take up too much. It does support other engines, however, and it gets really it gets really nice when using Ninja Physics and P2. So in this case, um, to enable physics, it's as simple as using gamephysics.arcade.enable. And now our, our uh, sprite actually can use as, uh, has physics enabled onto its body itself. And now we have player.body.bounce, and we have gravity. And now we can actually collide, and we can actually have it interact with our groups and our platforms that we've created before. And these are basic key keyboard controls. It's every, every game. You need a control in how to implement a game. So you actually need to use a keyboard, whether it's a mouse, uh, keyboard, controller. According to this example, we're actually using our uh, left and right cursors. And we're actually applying velocity and animations to it. So in general, we need resources to actually, there are resources in every game. There are game objects that have value for players in reaching their individual objectives. The value of these items can be determined by scarcity and utility. So not really determining about phaser, but this is almost on a general scale. That according to the game Catan, you actually need resources to actually drive the game. So every game is different in terms of what resources you can use. And conflict. As simple as it is, Mario, that one Goomba kind of describes uh, the conflict in Mario. You actually are trying to reach an objective, and you have uh, conflict, which emerges through procedures and rules in the game. So bumping into the Goomba will actually allow you to lose a life. So therefore, they kind of guide players to these conflict solutions. So therefore, you have to progress through the level and make sure you avoid the conflict, or sometimes uh, fight the conflict in different games, such as shooters. And the outcome, outcome game has to 
foster player interest. I think this is probably the most important one. You know, if, if not ob about objective, I would say those are two tied for kind of the most important one because if there is no outcome, why even participate in a game? So, so putting this all together, we actually now can collide in this in this code, we can actually uh, collect stars, or in this case, in Mario, we collect coins. And then when you actually collide with the coin, it would actually remove it off there. So, so now we have actually put our environment, we have our sprites, and how we interact with it. And part of it has to do with state. You kind of have that winning condition, the, the outcome. That's what you want to obtain. And I'll just run through some demo right now. It's really based on the site itself. These are all the examples that Phaser on its site provides with you. It's very, it's a very awesome site. You have everything from physics to bitmaps to audio. It's all built in here. Let me just check this again. And as basic as this is, this is what can be built on it, just regular JavaScript. And all these, all these libraries put together with audio. And, and that's about it. Uh, thank you. Thank you.